Hello and welcome. My name is Janna Pinkowska. I am representing AV Systems Marketing Team. I would like to welcome you warmly on today's webinar day and uh, let me introduce our speakers. Uh, here's William Yen, President of Americas at AV System and Maciej Dudek, Pre-Sales Engineer at AV System. Uh, before we start, I encourage you to ask questions during the webinar using the question tab. You can see it is placed on the right hand side of the webinar window. We will try to answer them at the end of the presentation. We will also be sharing the recording and the slide deck with you. And now let's move on to our today's topic. Will, Maciej, the floor is yours. Thank you, Joanna. Hello, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Uh, thank you for joining us. I appreciate your time to spend uh, the next hour with us. And uh, the title is CBRS and uh, Shared Spectrum. Uh, private IoT networks. Now you probably wonder what makes us qualified to even talk about these. So a couple of quick words about AV system. We are a software company and uh, our DNA is in the device and data management. We service or we work with service providers, uh, enterprises directly, uh, different verticals, industrials to utilities companies, and uh, uh, very importantly, uh, uh, we work with OEMs, uh, the people who makes these devices available uh, uh, based on industry standards. So a quick outline of today's topic in the next hour. So we're gonna discuss, share, introduce shared spectrum. We're gonna introduce uh, what is CBRS for those of uh, us living in the US and why it is important. Uh, we're gonna discuss what are the typical use cases and applications being uh, trialed or deployed. Uh, then we're gonna spend the majority of our time on the concerns of your implementation, design, and uh, associated with the success criteria for you to deploy shared spectrum-based services. So shared spectrum uh, opens up opportunities in current 40 LTE environment. In the US, we're referring to the mid-band 3.5 gigahertz uh, used to be reserved for the US Navy. And uh, FCC opened up, auctioned off this, uh, the uh, spectrum is called Citizens Broadband Radio Services, CBRS in Europe is between that 2.3 to 3.5 gigahertz band. Each day, hardly anything go by without hearing some news. So on the right are the news flashes uh, we, we put, put up here, just a few, right? <laughs> There's so many news about shared spectrum, rapid rise of CBRS, and the investment in the CBRS run, redo uh, access network. And uh, you got carriers from Rogers uh, up north from me in Canada, uh, talking about in Europe, uh, Tedia in Sweden and the Finland, all these companies doing a lot of shared spectrum, collaborating on deploying our private wireless networks. With the COVID-19 pandemic, the increase in broadband traffic has put extra pressure on the existing broadband networks. As we all know, right? We're going through this, we're working from home and uh, home is the office now. Shared spectrum allows service providers uh, to extend their coverage, network coverage. It also allows enterprises to build and control their own private networks. So let's uh, go a little deeper. What is CBRS? So CBRS has is composed of three tiers of users. As mentioned, the incumbent is the US uh, military. And then we have the priority uh, licensees and occupy a space there. And then we'll have a generally available, now you're hearing all these uh, FCC auctions, service providers, new entrants bidding on the spectrums or got the spectrums. What is the significance of this? 
it opens up a wide variety of markets and applications. A primary example or application for using CBRS is fixed wireless access. Uh, service providers uh, extending their coverage into rural and uh, hard to reach area or in urban, uh, in between tall buildings, the signal gaps, providing fixed to wireless, wirelessly connecting these buildings, providing a uh, bandwidth. It makes uh, uh, the private uh, networks uh, economically uh, more uh, uh, feasible, uh, viable, because of better performance in Wi-Fi and uh, enterprise can connect their assets, they want to track their employees, and even extend into their partners as they build their next generation digitized business. So mission critical applications can be supported with security, performance, reliability, or under the control of the enterprise themselves. So specifically, let's let's get into some of the uh, use cases. Where we first talk about uh, service providers offering fixed wireless access. That's for uh, fixed line. You hear AT and T, you hear Verizon every other day in the news doing uh, CBRS. You hear cable operators uh, bidding on the spectrum, deploying CBRS based wireless services. Or cable by definition was a fixed line operator. Now this is, provides a way, a means for them to get into the wireless space. And what the user on the other side is residential homes. And a lot of these are small, medium sized uh, businesses, like a, a, a resort, a hotel chain uh, in a resort, hospitals, office parks tall building campus where you have gaps of signals. So um, these are the incumbent service providers. What's even more exciting is the, uh, for ISPs, independent, smaller independent service providers, especially wireless service providers, so WISPs. Um, Enterprises, as mentioned, seeking control of its own uh, network. They don't have to contract a carrier. For a lot of the example would be uh, utility companies. They're running a power generation, power transmission network. They want the quality of services. They want the reliability and they want the security. Everything kind of walled in under their control for performance and as well as uh, the uh, cost factor. These are all created off of this uh, really promising technology uh, environment share under shared spectrum, the utilization of the spectrum to uh, enable your own services. So it's getting really exciting. Okay, well, uh, that's all great. Um, all the opportunities that are brought uh, by the shared spectrum. However, you have to be also aware of the concerns that uh, you will encounter during the, the process of deployment of, of shared spectrum um, projects. So here we will list a couple of them, uh, starting from the business perspective, going through the more uh, technological dive, uh, and ending on the uh, end user experience that's what uh, we believe is the most important. So uh, let's dive in one by one uh, for them. All right, that's a good point. And uh, so we're talking about these concerns and these are also the success criteria. So uh, based on our uh, field experience, uh, working with uh, service providers and some enterprises that we're uh, working with today, and uh, we outline a few of these uh, for your benefit or lessons learned from the field. Number one, business strategy. Like everything else in life, <laughs> you gotta know your objective. And uh, there's uh, uh, it's easily said than done. Technology uh, guys want to do what's cool 
up there. And uh, uh, business guys want to see uh, what uh, make their uh, business uh, growing fast. You got a marketing guys who want to market their stuff a certain way. So it is very easy for each group to kind of wander off on its own. It's critically important to have the team uh, together, design, and uh, what they uh, what they agree was the business objective. Uh, what do you want to accomplish? Design the business plan. What is the ROI you want to uh, achieve in what time frame? Otherwise, your CFO gonna come in saying, "What? I spent all this money. I haven't got anything in six months." If that's your CFO's uh, uh, expectation. And more importantly, also from the get go, you got to figure out your partnerships to build. Uh, I just learned one phrase. Somebody said something is a team sport. Uh, it cannot be more true for this uh, CBRS based uh, uh, share spectrum services. You can tell from the introduction it's shared. There is a, a traffic cop, uh, all of these. So you have a partner, you have a device, you have device management, you have the spectrum allocation, you have the business users, you have the back office. So all of these you need to be well thought after before you launch your trial or your service. Service providers, your goal, coverage, service quality, customer experience, enterprises, you got to be laser focused on how do I support my applications? And uh, how do I have uh, not creating a different silos, but I have everything under one roof and uh, gave me the ability to track, monitor, control my assets or providing better service for my employees, make it easier for my partners to do business with me. Second, technology standards. So it's a shared. And that means it's coordinated use of spectrum frequency. So there's a term, a layer of providers called Spectrum Access Services, SAS. SAS is like a traffic call. Uh, it's a cloud-based database interface. Uh, tells you who used the spectrum at what time or what time is available to which tier of the uh, user group. Remember the military still have the priority. Second one, you have a priority uh, user licensees. Then you have a general uh, licensees. One good uh, starting point also check in is CBRS Alliance. They have an interop uh, certification program called ONGO. That's for uh, the ecosystem partners to uh, make sure their device works with management platform, and uh, what we'll goes through the uh, spectrum access services. So it's all technology standard based on the 3GPP technology. The CBRS devices, uh, you probably hear a lot, there's a lot of players in that space, you know, both domestic and overseas, and uh, coming in, uh, providing a uh, device, is outdoor fundal cell type of device. Being able to register device, authenticate the device, and the bootstrap, and uh, getting access, and being able to be monitored to send data. And then you got a critical element in all of these now. It's a device management. So device management, managing the life cycle of devices onboarded from inventory to go live, be actively sending information, providing services. So a uh, technology standard is uh, broadband form TR69 and auto configuration server. And it's next generation, the uh, evolution of TR69, the TR369 uh, USP. Everything has to be uh, built with security uh, in mind from get go. Now we put a lot of pressure on the device manufacturers uh, uh, supporting security from the hardware level. Oh, talking about device and device vendors, Macek, go yeah. ahead. 
Number three will be the multi-vendor device environment. So up to uh, today, uh, there is uh, 444 uh, vendors of CBSD with uh, 380 models, different models of the devices approved by FCC. That makes a lot of variety of, uh, of models of vendors that uh, you uh, would like to provide, uh, you like to work. Because at the end, you don't want to end up with one single uh, vendor. You would like to have more heterogeneous uh, environment. What makes it uh, even more complicated, even though that there is a standardization for the device management with a tier 69 protocol, the radio parameter uh, themselves are not standardized um, by a tier 69 protocol. Uh, and also there is a critical question, what do you want to monitor? What do you want to um, check with these devices? Because there is a, a variety of uh, different parameters uh, starting from standard ones like RSRP, RSRQ, but then you can go deeper with uh, different uh, radio parameters that you can uh, you can and you wish to, to monitor, to compare. So at the end, you understand what is happening in your network. Uh, you can take some understanding from this data. So at the end, um, you have to think hard uh, on um, how to manage this heterogeneous fleet of your devices and compare results. So at the end, you want to compare apples to apples um, with your um, device fleet. Number four will be the management platform. So um, it's uh, the type of the service that where it's important to think in the whole life cycle of the device. Uh, because especially now in uh, nowadays in the COVID times, uh, you plant the, the CDSD uh, somewhere in the middle of nowhere and uh, well, sending technicians uh, there is uh, costly. So as much as possible, you would like to perform operations, you will maintain these devices remotely. What does it mean? What, what have to be done? Uh, well, starting from the very beginning, before you actually uh, start uh, um, market uh, trials, it will be good to test the devices if they support all the uh, parameters, if they are um, Man, can be managed remotely, how they are performing. Uh, so to perform uh, interoperability testing uh, before you decide, I want to go with this, this, and this vendor, with this model. Uh, then you have to securely onboard the devices. So uh, you have onboard uh, uh, in your device asset inventory, uh, the whole population of your devices where you can securely manage them. Uh, then there is a service provisioning, so you can have the, uh, some initial configuration for um, for the new devices that are connecting to the network. Uh, you can perform the firmware upgrade campaigns, massive campaigns for firmware upgrade, so-called FOTA. Um, you can configure devices uh, depending on the uh, different states, um, like Wi-Fi configuration or, or some security configuration. What's extremely important for the CBRS projects is the monitoring that I was already uh, mentioning so gathering the the data uh, from the devices and then processing this data uh, the health checks so understanding um, if something's going wrong some predictive maintenance of okay this device device is behaving strangely the the parameters are uh, going badly so probably you have to do something with the device and until the CPU retirement or CPU sunset when um, you decide that okay we have to replace this device with the new one um, to um, so that the customers have uninterrupted uh, service. Then number five will be the understanding the data from data collection to business intelligence. Because well, first step is to collect the raw data from the devices. We need to have the device. Um, we need to have the data to uh, to start doing something with that. But then what's important? What's our aim is understanding what what brings the um, what brings the data because. Well, just the value that RSRP is equal minus dec uh, 90 decibels is not telling that that much. We we should have some information if that's good or bad uh, in these conditions. So, um, uh, how it was in the last week, last month. Um, so uh, this also um, need to uh, give us also some information about uh, what we should do with this data. And also what's important is um, to understand this data on the whole network, not only per one device, uh, but also on the aggregated level. So um, to understand, uh, for example, what are the regions with the uh, 
weak parameters, but maybe there are some power outages, uh, maybe there are some um, uh, hurricanes going on, maybe there are some regions that, uh, because of the infrastructure problems, there are um, issues not with the device, but with the infrastructure. So then aggregating the data um, may, gives you much more understanding of what's happening per county, per state, per country. Uh, so this also uh, gives you the overview and understanding of your data um what you should do what's the level of the, the experience for, for your customers then number six will be the operational support and management uh, maintenance uh, so it's not the buy and forget business uh, you have to you, you need to have the, some reliable partners because then it's the the business where you invest a lot of money and uh, it will be going on for years. So you need to have, you, th you need to think of support, maintenance, how much you're gonna uh, spend time uh, in future years, how much time you're gonna spend, how much uh, knowledge, experience you need uh, all together to run the whole service. So you need to have the reliable partners uh, that will support you in the uh, critical times. Okay, that's not, that's a, a really good uh, good advice or the concerns we uh, we run into. Uh, Maciek, that's good, good job there. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, when, when when you go through all of these, you need to think about, you know, what does the end user experience uh, should look like. And uh, when we sat down at the end of a trial with uh, a, um, a a customer uh, for CBRS. And uh, we, we were, you know, a few months down the road, we sat together saying, what, what, what lesson learned? Oh, you know, we wish we had uh, thought about, uh, you know, tracking certain parameters, linking or integrated with our a, a customer care kind of operation. And the CSRs, customer service reps, can use this and in, in an easier uh, way. Oh, I wish, you know, we could have, uh, we, we should have done for next phase, Let's do this, providing this to our tier three tech support uh, information. They like to see the data uh, the other way. So uh, oftentimes at the end of uh, a, a trial, when we uh, sit together with uh, our customers, we learn things, how to do it better, how to do it, uh, you know, extending it. Uh, it's all about the user side. For enterprise, uh, it's interesting as well. Because typically, uh, the, at least these uh, ones we work with, uh, large enterprises, uh, industrials, they, they got uh, different uh, business uh, units. Um, they start thinking, oh, you know what? The next, the, the other business unit can benefit from this, can use this. I wish we had brought them in, uh, in, in phase one. Well, it doesn't hurt us to bring them in phase two. But uh, they start getting new ideas. But it's all about e e e enabling the user, either your internal customer, user group uh, user, or the residential case uh, uh, consumers, right? So uh, these user experience, you gotta have that in mind in your design before you go out uh, there to start deploying your services. Or otherwise, you're gonna end up with forever, you're gonna be phase one you're going to design uh, your phase two for quite a while. I think uh, in, in summary, we discussed a few of the uh, lessons learned from the field. And think about CBRS. A lot of us like to focus on the technology, but it's just a radio, right? It provides a business opportunity. And getting your business strategy right is critical. And what do you want to do? Get different groups together uh, to design your, your services, number one. Uh, number two, uh, do not underestimate the complexity of uh, working with uh, so many different you know, uh, participants. You, got, you, you, you gotta be uh, aware of which success is you're working with. You gotta be uh, uh, concerned about, uh, you got different uh, CBSD vendors you, you work with, right? And different uh, vendors have different levels of support of industry standards. You gotta test each device, each device model independently. Uh, that alone can be a uh, a very taxing uh, a task, uh, to be honest. So um, these are uh, major things uh, we learn. Uh, you need to have a robust 
uh, management platform. And that's the kind of thing that we provide uh, to talk to the uh, CBSDs, the devices, work with the, uh, the next layer up to the SaaS level and providing integration with your customer care or your device management portal or customer service portal or even your marketing uh, portal, if you will. So that's what we have today. Joanna, what back to you? Uh, yeah, thanks, Will. Uh, thanks, Mathieu. And uh, I guess we have enough time for a Q&A session. Uh, I encourage you to ask uh, questions to our presenters. I can see that we already some, have some questions submitted. Uh, Will, would you like to start? Uh, let me see. Oh, I need to hit the question. It's loading up questions, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. So I'm going to read the question uh, first uh, while uh, everybody's thinking about your, your questions. I think, I guess uh, you can type in and the questions show up here that we can see from uh, the presenter uh, screen. Question number one, what are the common parameters that a user would typically want to track? Uh, like a, what type of KPIs? I think this one more, my ticket probably a better uh, answer than me. Yeah, that's a good question. And this is actually the question that we uh, typically get um, as one of the first question when we are discussing with the operators that want to um, start their uh, business uh, with uh, CBRS. So, OK, I have some devices. What should I measure? What are the KPIs? What's, what are the measure of success? So uh, you can think in a couple of ways. Um, uh, oh, at the end, as was the last takeaway from Will, uh, the key is the user experience. So and how we measure the, the user experience. You can start from uh, raw technical data like radio parameters, like um, um, signal strength, like noise um, level. And kind of important is, the, uh, for example, cell swapping. So if the, the, this uh, CBSD is uh, frequently changing the um, connection with the main towers um, that may, uh, may mean some, some problems in the network. Uh, maybe some frequent uh, reboots uh, of the device will uh, indicate um, issues with the device. Uh, quite obvious ones are the, the speed. Uh, so download, upload, uh, throughput of the, of the bandwidth, uh, so to understand. Uh, what are the, the end, exp end user experience uh, here? So uh, at the end, this is one of the crucial things that you should, uh, this is exercise that you should uh, do beforehand, before you start uh, looking for the devices, looking for the management platforms, you should start thinking, what, is the, what are the indi indicators of the success um, uh, for you? Hope that answered uh, the question. The next one is this question. Uh, I'll read the question first. It's saying, we uh, talk to, for, for the management layer, we talk to we talk to device manufacturers. Is that uh, uh, the right thing to do? And uh, uh, how, how do we not uh, to uh, avoid being locked in? Okay, so I think there's really not right or wrong answer. Uh, I think you picked up what we are saying is we are a uh, there's a, a group uh, doing uh, we are a vendor neutral uh, platform uh, dealing with multiple vendors uh, devices and uh, there are also some device manufacturers themselves bring their own management system if it works for you perfect so uh, if that's the majority or that's what you you want to do uh, simplify your life. But as soon as you get into a multi-vendor environment, and you will find out that uh, the open uh, third-party management platform probably works better for you. And that's my uh, recommendation. Uh, I answered that question. Hope that answers uh, your question. The next one, uh, I got another one. Thank you for the presentation. My question, is it possible to deploy CBRS on 5G network? Number two. 
how security will be on CBRS. Is it going to be based on certificate authorities? Um, I think there's a, I'll take a quick uh, on the first part of the two question. Uh, the CBRS uh, organization is working on making it uh, working on the 4G networks as well. I think there's still a roadmap uh, today as we speak. Um, today, primarily it's leveraging what's available, uh, which is the 4G uh, LTE network or CBRS. Uh, Machik, uh, you can talk about the security aspect yeah. of or CBRS? Yeah, so about the security, there are different levels uh, that we could talk about the security itself. So it might be uh, talking about the device security. So um, how to authenticate devices that uh, this device is, is actually the one that uh, should be authorized uh, to be managed. And well, uh, we can think of um, typical appreciate keys. We can think of the certificates. Um, then uh, the whole part of the authorization of the shared spectrum, it is taken part by the um, the SAS uh, layer, so um, this is the one that is um, taking care that if, for example, the uh, U.S. Navy um, ship is going to uh, and need to occupy this uh, um, the spectrum right now, the, all the devices will will leave the spectrum uh, for 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 uh, for this ship. So um, this is taken part by by the layer of the of the SAS. So uh, the question here is, I mean, security is extremely important and it's taken part on different levels. On low level communication self, uh, well, uh, the communication of the devices, uh, the telemetry might be um, encrypted with the uh, HTTPS uh, communication, well, depending on the protocol chosen, but uh, for tier 69 is uh, already uh, standardized for, for four years, how, the, how it should be. Um, this uh, transmission of the data uh, done securely. Then if you were talking about the securing up the, um, the sharing the spectrum, then this is uh, done on the layer of the SAS that is also standardized by, at least in the US, by um, FCC. Right. So we have another question. Oh, a lot of questions coming up. Oh, I like this, I love this. Another question came up. Uh, how does your ACS work and how can we roll it out into a UE solution? Um, I'm not sure what a UE solution user, is. Really... Uh, user equipment. User equipment? Yeah. Okay. So uh, generally speaking, if you look at uh, the ACS, right, it's an uh, industry standard been, a long, uh, been around for a long time and a wide variety of uh, you know, applications. Even today, you look at your uh, home security or home automation industry. They uh, like an AD company like ADT. They're monitoring, you know, your your home security. They got uh, modems, uh, alarm panels in residential homes, or even business uh, buildings, right? And they're tracking it. A lot of it's on these three um, G, four G networks. And uh, so managing that device is, uh, is here comes uh, TR69 ACS. You're looking at uh, industries uh, uh, tracking their uh, deployed assets. Uh, also have, uh, this is millions and millions of device ACS. How does a, a ACS work? You know, we are remotely monitoring, right? In the residential arena, you know, there's a, a certain interval, uh, certain, you know, 15 uh, minutes, every 15 minutes, we pull, ping the device, get device status before even the customer calls. There was a joke years ago, I'm, I'm more of a cable guy, uh, a little old, you can tell from my gray hair. Um, there, a, a joke, you know, your cable operator uh, providing your internet services, they don't know your modem is down, you have fuzzy picture on your uh, video side and, uh, a loss of communication like I just did. They don't know that until you call them. Now with ACS, they can proactively knowing the status of the, the device. What's more, you know, what's the, how the ACS works even. We evolved that from monitoring the CPE, right? We call this customer premise equipment, your modems, your uh, set-top boxes, 
your alarm panels, whatever you, ha you have, not only just monitor them, uh, but also correlate with the network status. A lot of times, nothing wrong with the device at a customer home or in a small business uh, office. It's the network uh, has some issues. There's a fiber cut on the street, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Jones. Well, uh, uh, nothing to worry about. We know what's happening and uh, there's a fiber cut on your street. Your service is gonna be back up in five minutes. That's one issue, one point issue resolution provides a more of a, a good user experience instead of let me call you back in 10 minutes, which you probably won't be able to until next day, figure out what's going on. So ACS is a proactive management tool uh, for the CSRs to troubleshoot for the customer much better, uh, increase the uh, user experience, customer loyalty, right? Um, uh, Matik, you want to take the second part of the question, how to roll into a UE solution? How to roll it out? Uh, well, uh, uh, about the deployment, it can be deployed in the hyperscalers. It can be um, in the cloud. It can be deployed in on-prem installations. Uh, the important is that uh, the devices themselves uh, have the connectivity to, uh, if we're talking about tier 69, um, with the, this ACS, um, with the proper ACS URL, with the certificates, so all the security part that we are discussing, uh, so all of that is set up. Uh, and the rest is uh, pretty straightforward. So devices are um, periodically uh, communicating with the, uh, with, uh, the server to, to communicate with updates of the, for example, monitoring parameters, or we can on demand uh, manage the device if there's some um, need uh, to perform the firmware upgrade, for example. So the deployment itself, how to roll it out, uh, well, you have to set up the ACS, and so then you have to connect uh, um, the devices to uh, to the ACS. But this is pretty straightforward and automatic. Yeah, just to elaborate on that. Um, so, in terms of deployment, what we are seeing more and more is a cloud deployment. You know, operators or you know companies, service providers, and um, as they grow. They like to have a, a one platform service provider and uh, managing just connected device, get what they want in terms of reporting, in, in terms of monitoring, all the parameters uh, Matic uh, went through, all of these. So uh, it's, it's a, a, what we call the SaaS model, right? Software as a service. So in the cloud, we're seeing more and more of that kind of a deployment versus on-prem, uh, on-premise nowadays. But each uh, vertical has a little different, uh, uh, just not a one size fits all. Like I mentioned earlier, I think, is in the utility business, uh, because it's a critical infrastructure, is we're talking, we're dealing with power transmission. That monitoring, that network need to be uh, more secure uh, so you can sleep well at night. It's more of a, a, a walled in uh, even if you don't have millions, millions of devices, uh, you still want to have it, you know, kind of an enclosed, uh, licensed management platform on, on premise. So Joanna, do we have a, another question? No, I think that's all. So, uh, Please remember, if you have any further questions, you can always reach us at sales at avsystem.com or visit our website. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for joining us today and uh, have a good day. My, Goodbye. my, yeah, just, just uh, one, one second. So we have a couple more minutes. So just my par parting thought, uh, honestly, not from a marketing perspective, more from advising you or advising some of you to advise your end customer is that uh, you, it's never a good idea to adopt technology for the sake of a technology. It's a better idea to figure out what you want to do with it. That's more important. So you, if you start with a management platform, what that means is you have your business 
results in your mind. Then you work backward. What kind of device I need? What kind of things I need, the data I need to get out of the device? My chick mentioned from data to intelligence, that's exactly what this management platform is all about. So data is raw data. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of them. Uh, if you don't have the contextual information that is through integration uh, by your management platform into uh, your, uh, your CRM system, your NOC system, then it's just raw data. Pretty soon, people lose interest in, in it because it doesn't serve much purpose. Like everything else in life, if you have the end goal, the business purpose in mind from the day one, then you're going to start thinking, I need to think about my management platform first, then engage my hardware providers, my system integrators, and my other partners. CBRS is great in the US, is a great opportunity. And in Europe, you hear more and more of these big uh, enterprises, industrials, from automotive industry, industry to a traditional, even uh, people running uh, you know, a weather stations uh, of leveraging a shared spectrum to deploy their services, uh, building their own uh, private networks. So we're open, like uh, Joanna was saying, we're open to uh, your follow-up and uh, give you our advice from our experience. And uh, we're not the only thing, uh, by the way. I'll be the first one to admit. And um, But we have experience working both with the uh, service providers, big and small, tier ones, you know, have 20 some million subscribers versus smaller WISPs have uh, just a few thousand devices that service provider space and uh, enterprises. And uh, we've done one thing that probably make your life a little easier. Uh, we have probably no less, Machek, correct me if I'm wrong, our device partnership, uh, we probably have more than 50 right now that devices were already tested. Not all of a single vendor's models, but uh, Matik maybe you can even correct me and the, um, the ones in the CBR space, we probably been working with all of them. Yep. That's pretty important that, uh, well, because of experience that we have uh, on variety of markets, we, well, we know a lot of devices from really also low level, but uh, we already pre-integrated with them. We use the vendor specific parameters to map them to some more generic or more abstract uh, level. So there's high chances that uh, the devices that you're going to find on market are already um, pre-integrated with, with our platform. So well, you will be ready to go uh, more or less out of the box. Nothing, just one more thought, parting thought. <laughs> I keep adding more. <laughs> uh, so uh, nothing excites me more than and you bring a real case that you have an issue and uh, you run into, uh, you want to bounce ideas off of, off of us. You know how to find us, like uh, Joanna saying, evsystem.com or find an evsystem on LinkedIn. So uh, we would be more than happy to share with you. Uh, because we do have the experience working with uh, device manufacturers, device integrators. We've done a lot, a lot of device onboarding, testing, we actually have a you know, testing uh, platform for the purpose of onboarding devices, even in the cloud. So you know how to shift things around. We can, we, we can help or help your uh, customer in this case. So I hope the last 46 minutes is uh, helpful to you. We look forward to your uh, follow up. And um, so I promise you that's my la last parting thought. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.